you can go from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state. Yeah. So the, the yeah. So, so if I draw it on the back, I have a system. I have a system. Put big things like this to. It's isolated. So entropy in minus entropy out plus entropy generated equals the change in entropy in my system. Second law, isolated. Okay. Delta S equals the integral of delta Q over T, where delta S is greater than or equal to zero. If reversible, delta S equals zero. Okay, so this is what you memorized. Okay, so now when I talk about it, you don't need to question, you just, okay, maybe they didn't understand it, but you can go there. And then now this is what I told you about entropy balance. So I have an isolated system, and within my system, I have two stickmen doing ring around the rosy. Okay. So two stickmen inside the box doing ring around the rosy. And so I can look at this and. So one equilibrium state might be before the game has started, and then another equilibrium, and then so they could do that, they could be at equilibrium, and then they could play the game for a while, and stop, and then they're at equilibrium again. Or I could look at it when they're playing the game, okay? If it's a constant process, there's no really non, e there's no huge temp, of course, I put two steps in the box. It looks like a pretty non-uniform temperature distribution and mass distribution. But for the sake of it, let's assume that's, you know, let's not worry about that. But I have two stickmen in the box doing ring around the ropes. You get too colorful and then you break the laws of physics. But, um, so, but ring around the rosy. And so I have this, but this ring around the rosy process is nice because I can look at it as a cycle. And so I can, I'll just put in red one and two. So as they rotate, you can see different positions, but once they get back to here, after there could be a cycle. So if I go about this process and it's an isolated system, my system de is defined of that. Well, given it's isolated, I can, al I can always break this in as Q in over some boundary temperature and the mass in over some, you know, Entropy per unit mass. So I can always do this, right? But it's isolated, and I can do the same for here. But because it, it's isolated, there is no way for any heat or mass to come into my system, and there's no way for any heat or mass to leave my system. So entropy in and entropy out is zero. And then I have this, which says that for an isolated system, delta S has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I know that S gen has to be greater than or equal to zero. Let's say I put this in rate form. It doesn't matter if I put it in rate form or not. In terms of entropy, the rate of entropy and the rate of entropy out, there's no way for heat to come in. There's no way for heat to leave. Cross these out. And the, still the same applies. The rate of entropy generated has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I put it in, in rate form. But let's, let's just, that's just rate form. So let's just write it out for S gen equals delta S system. So if I go through half a cycle, okay, and I look at the change in entropy of my system after half a cycle, there might be some change in entropy within. So entropy generated has, you could say it might be greater than zero. What I, what I want to get to is that, let's go back to this entropy generated green being greater than or equal to zero. 
So if it's not a cycle, let's just let's say we're gonna assume that a cycle can take place. Okay? But we only get information about half the process. So it goes halfway around. So one and two switch positions inside my isolated box. Now, the second law coupled with this, with, or the second law on rate form says that the entropy generated has to be greater than or equal to zero. So in that case, how does the entropy, so if the entropy generated has to be greater than or equal to zero, and now my state two represents the change in entropy in my system is, is a person swap, Okay, state one was initial, so which equals state one, two, or I'll, I'll say two, one. Let's write it out. Equals state, so it was one, two, and the final state was two, one, minus the state one, two. So this is state one, two, and then if I look at it the other way, where two is over here and one's over there, that's state two, one. So the final state was two, one, and the initial state. So I went through half this process. And so the change in entropy my system is such. And the second law says for an isolated system, which I have, that the entropy generated has to be greater than or equal to zero. So how does S21 have to compare to S12? Either this is greater or equal. OK. So then I can look at the, maybe the next step, and then I call it 2-1. But then if, if I go back, so if S2-1 is greater than S1-2, that automatically implies that I can't do a cycle. Because I can never, after coming back, I'll never get to that same state. If S2-1 is greater? Yeah, so if this, if, if, S21 is greater than S12. If S21 is greater than S12, that means that S gen is greater than zero. Okay? If S gen is greater than zero, is that reversible? Nope. It has to be equal to zero. So I automatically know that this ring around a rosy game is not a reversible process. However, if S12 was equal to S, if they did it half the way through, were equal, then I would at least be able to say maybe it's reversible because I, I have information that doesn't negate that possibility. However, I'd have to look at the next step to see if they get back to the same state. And so then after the next part of the half of the game, they went back and my initial state was S12. My final state would be S12. If that's the case, then I would have the change in entropy of my system of my two sick men in an is, you know, isolated system doing ring around the rosy would basically say that S gen was equal to zero. And if S gen is equal to zero, that means that I have a reversible process. Another way to say this is if I have an isolated system and something inside of it can go through a cycle, that cycle has to be reversible because of the also the other restriction of isolated boundary conditions. Because when I have any cycle, delta S, delta U, after one cycle equals zero. By definition, you go from one state back to its initial state. No, well, it doesn't. If, if you have a system that operates in a cycle yes. and it is within an isolated bound, that system is isolated from its surroundings, That's, that system, that cycle is reversible. It has to be reversible. There's no other way. If it's not a reversible cycle, it's not a cycle at all. You can't define it as a cycle. And this ring around the rosy game was an example. Because S gen has to be greater than or equal to zero. infinite joules per Kelvin, I guess. Well, for an isolated system, is that still? Entropy is entropy. It's just joules per Kelvin. Well, it's energy per unit degree. That's entropy. 
it tells you the number of options. So, I mean, I guess you can define a maximum if you if you say what your system is. If my system is CO2 gas, okay, and it is within this chamber, and the maximum temperature and pressure are that, yeah, then you can given you define the maximum temperature and pressure, you can define the maximum entropy of your system. Because it is just a function of temperature and pressure. 